Hello, pals. Welcome to the final day. <laughs> Windows 10 is going out of style tomorrow. Now, if you live in places like Europe, frankly, you'll be given an extra year of updates. But I liken this to basically being shot and injured and wounded on the streets. And uh, as you're bleeding out, would you rather just go out right there or slowly and painfully <laughs> for, the, for, for another year? Now, ladies and gentlemen, to give you an idea, I am not a fan of Microsoft Windows. But I understand if you use it, okay? I am a Linux user. I like using Arch Linux, by the way. I feel like I have to put it out there. I mean, if you're using Arch, you have to let everyone know. That's just the par for the course. But if you're somebody that is on Windows, I totally get it if you like using Windows and you actually need it. Now, to give you an idea, there are ways to run Windows applications underneath Linux. A video I made a few days ago did pretty goddamn well, where I showed you guys using virtual machine technology and free RDP, you can kind of make it look almost seamless. But there are some users who play video games like Battlefield 6, which is super duper popular, that do not function underneath Linux, nor do they function within a virtual machine underneath Linux, which is kind of how I use Windows. I actually use Windows in a virtual machine with a graphics card pass through if I wanna actually play some games with some Windows exclusive bells and whistles. But of course, obviously, if you're somebody like me in that situation, you can either have a separate computer or I just bought the game on PlayStation 5 and I called it a day. And I've been having a pretty good time. Obviously, these are things you kind of give up. And if you're not prepared to give up your anti-cheat enabled games because really those are games important to you, then well, Linux ain't worth the switch. But if you're somebody that's willing to, you know, obviously switch over and deal with some of the little headaches and quirks, I think it's a pretty embracing experience. Now there's a tool called Why Not Win 11, where you can download and see if you meet all of the requirements to run Windows 11 on your system. And if you can't, well, your computer is effectively e-waste. Now you might be like, well, Muda, what if I just don't update Windows 10? That's fine, you can actually keep using it. However, you're going to be exposing yourself to some serious security issues if down the road you don't get any updated patches. Somebody could absolutely violate Windows 10 and uh, Microsoft really doesn't need to give a shit about it because they've actually stopped supporting it. Now on the eve of Windows 10, Microsoft has actually done some pretty stupid things. For instance, they broke the media creation tool literally the day before, a couple days before Windows 10's end of life. So again, if you're somebody that is updating your Windows, you probably want to actually download a fresh ISO from Microsoft and install it the old-fashioned, God-intended way. However, if you're going down the road and wondering, can I just use a local account? Well, Microsoft stopped that, ladies and gentlemen. All of the workarounds that we were using for years are actually being blocked in the most recent Microsoft uh, you know, Windows 11 setup. So for instance, when I install Windows 11 on my system, I actually use a command. I basically get to a point where I can use Shift F10 to open up a console. I type in like OOBE bypass NRO, a command like that, it restarts the computer and provided I don't feed it an internet connection, which I don't, I just tell the VM no, uh, I can make a local account, meaning I never have to create an account with Microsoft, even though I have one, but generally speaking, when I'm using an operating system, the less connected it is to any service, the happier I am. Now, obviously Microsoft doesn't really care and there are still workarounds currently that you can use for local accounts, but this just shows that going into the future, Microsoft wants you to have an account anytime you use Windows, effectively meaning that they want you internet connected from the get-go, locked into their services and just being pummeled with stuff that you don't need. You know, it's crazy to think that Microsoft went from, you know, a company that, you know, you could just go buy a copy of Windows XP, Windows 7, install that shit on your computer. You don't even have to use the Microsoft updates. You probably should, but you have the option to install everything locally. You know, it's crazy to think the only professional operating system that you can get your hands on, which is Mac OS, you know, you can go to Apple and you can purchase a, uh, a couple thousand dollar MacBook, which I would say is actually pretty well worth the money considering the quality and the, the quality of the hardware and software, but you don't even need to have an Apple account. You can just make a local Mac account and walk away feeling pretty fucking happy. Linux, I don't even have to explain it to you, ladies and gentlemen. Linux, you can install anything locally. You don't even have, you can do anything you want. It's an open source experience. If you want to not have, you know, certain features, you can eliminate certain, you can put as many features as you want, okay? It really is your decision to make. 
So obviously on the last day of Windows 10, seeing Microsoft make all these changes has kind of accelerated people into either upgrading to Windows 11 or actually embracing the Penguin for the first time. Or there's a secret path where you can just go all the way to Mac, or you can engage with things like FreeBSD or whatever the fuck, okay? It really is your time to pick and choose and take ownership of the hardware that you have. So obviously I'm here to show you guys all of the other technologies you guys can use to make your computer your own, okay? Now Linux comes in a million different flavors, ladies and gentlemen. And one of the flavors that I kind of started seeing that was popular on the internet and actually was mentioned to me like, Muda, can you make a video on Omarchi? Omarchi or whatever the heck this is called. It's a beautiful, modern, opinionated Linux by an individual known as DHH. So I decided to download Omarchi, for instance, and again, it's a very small ISO you can get. And of course, it takes literally less than four minutes on my computer to install. And I knew this was gonna be an easy install when I just saw how fast and smooth everything was here. So again, you give it a username, it's super simple. You fit your username, you give it your password, and if you're a developer, you can give it you know certain extra information for Git authentication. Again, you can skip this step if you're not a developer. This is mostly a uh, Linux, uh, I wouldn't even say distribution, but an install script geared towards people that are developers. But as soon as you go through all these instructions, hit that big old yes button, it literally just takes minutes to get this going. It's actually insane how fast it is. So that is mind blowing, okay? You know, you wanna talk about install times on Windows or even Mac? Linux through Arch has it completely beaten. <laughs> so let's fire it up together, okay? So here it is, I'm firing up the actual system right now in a virtual machine. So I, I don't actually have GPUs pass through to it, I can do it but ultimately I'm just here to show you how the stuff works. So you get this cool screen, you basically enter in your password and you get this cool little loading bar. Now to give you an idea, this is not a, from my understanding, distribution. It's actually more an install script by DHH. So regardless of whether you agree with the guy or not, I don't, I'm, I'm very different in my belief and viewpoints, but the software, the actual design of it is pretty damn decent. Now, if you've never used Hyperland, it's a tiling windows manager. So if you're somebody that's moving off Microsoft Windows, well, this might not be a bad option if you wanna get into that cool tiling world of Windows or Linux systems. So you can actually look up a hotkey for the Omarchi distribution, which again, shows you all of the ways that you can use this with a keyboard. You're supposed to use these uh, operating systems with keyboards instead of mice. So anytime you see the words super, it's usually your Windows key on the keyboard. So again, just to show you how this kind of stuff works, I can hit super space and I can launch any application I need to. So for instance, Firefox, I can fire it up right over here and I just have a browser that's available. I can do the Windows key two or super two, super three, four, five. And if you see at the top left, you can see that I'm switching between workspaces. I can close the windows by hitting super W like that. And of course it's super duper awesome to see just how much this is built out of the box. Now, usually for Hyperland, you've probably seen people show it on YouTube, but it does require a lot of configuration. But in this case, Omarchi comes with a lot of those configurations built in. So by hitting the Windows key or Super, Alt, and Space together, you get this option right here. Now, it's super easy to update the system. You just hit that big Update button, and you hit Omarchi, for instance, and as long as you can just enter your pseudo password, you basically can update your system this easily. And once it's done, close any key to continue. Windows Alt and Space takes you back to this menu where you can start learning other things. So you can learn Arch, you can learn Hyperland, you can learn Omarchi, you can learn the key bindings, for instance. So you don't even need that web page that I showed you. And of course, obviously, there are ways for you to change anything you want with the system. So if you know what you're doing with Hyperland, you can modify the configuration file right here. But if you don't know what you're doing, I would definitely take some time to learn this shit instead of just playing with it willy nilly. But if you're somebody that just wants to fuck around with different themes, you've got all these, you got like things like Osaka Jade, so you can make your system literally change its entire view with just a few button presses. I believe some of these like actual things are just AI generated wallpapers. So if that's not your cup of tea, thankfully you can go over here and you can fucking change the backgrounds to whatever you want as long as you understand Hyperland. Now, if you wanna install programs, for instance, like let's say you wanna install Steam or Discord, 
Going to the install button right over here gives you all of these options built in already. So you've got options for gaming, you've got options for just general packages, or if you know what you're getting in the Arch user repository, you can go there. But to show you how easy it is to install Discord and Steam, just hit package and type in the words Discord. And of course, as long as you hit enter, it'll ask you for your user or root password, feed that in, it will download Discord, install that to your system, and of course, now you can launch it. So Windows and space, type in the words Discord, and you're good to go. Now I actually already had it installed because a lot of the stuff that you you install, a lot of stuff comes pre-installed into this anyways. So you don't really have to go through that effort. But let's say you want to record your voice. You can download things like Audacity, for instance, right? Which is a pretty popular tool. So again, go to install, go to package, type in the words Audacity, hit enter, put in your password. And of course it does all of the goofy stuff for you. And of course, then you can start it up yourself. Now, obviously, I don't think Discord was built for this DPI, but if you also want to install other applications, you can also start up other things like your browser. And because it's a tiling manager, you can do Windows B, and it'll start up a browser right next to you. And of course, you can move things around. You can start other things like a terminal over here, which, of course, obviously, this terminal is not you know big enough for my system. Uh, again, I'm using a virtual machine, so the actual resolution is pretty low. Should not reflect like this on a real installed system. But you get the idea. Even from the OR, I can just install like Ladybird right over here and just get this going. So again, if you want to play around with other browsers, you get the idea, OK? It's really a super easy way for you to get into the tiling manager like a normal human being. But let's say you're somebody that doesn't care so much about the tiling managers. Well, Omarchi is great for that, but you probably want to stick with something that I use, which is Cache OS. Now, I've been using Cache OS for a bit now, and I will say right now it's probably the best Linux distribution for anybody who wants to hop off the Windows 10 train. If you don't want to go to Windows 11 and you know that the games you really care about do work underneath this, you're fine. In fact, to give you an idea of how smooth everything basically runs, I am running some of the most latest AAA games at maximum settings, in some cases with ray tracing. And while there is a performance loss on NVIDIA GPUs, it's really not that big and pronounced. The guys over at Cache OS have done such a good job at optimizing the Linux kernel for their purposes that for gamers out of the box, it's a fucking pretty good experience. Even games that I'm playing that obviously aren't loaded with anti-cheats, games that I'm really into right now, like Final Transmission, like they have a demo, it's like a typing battle royale, just works out of the box day one absolutely flawlessly. And for a lot of you people who are out there and actually streaming as well too, OBS, screen recording, a lot of stuff works better than it has ever done for years before. Like years before it used to be issues streaming off of Linux, but now if you are running a Linux box, I think the experience is pretty much there and, 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 and as good as the Windows stuff in, in general. Look, ultimately with a lot of the software, the best part about it is, is that you never have to look at, you know, the, the activate windows anymore, because now you switch to a free and open source system. Not only do you not need to require an internet connection to operate your computer anymore, or like requiring a Microsoft account to even just do that first time setup. You also, again, just don't need the internet. You don't need to have, you don't need to worry about the hardware that is not supported because the Linux kernel in general is far more accepting of older hardware than I guess most modern paid for operating systems really are. And as far as the gaming stuff goes, and as far as a lot of software compatibility, Wine is catching up, virtual machine technology is doing a pretty damn good job. And look, down the road, a lot of those tools that I showed you a couple days ago are talking about invoking things like GPU acceleration. So you might even get to the road where you could use productivity software entirely in a virtual machine, and it should work far better than it does now. Look, Linux is a constantly evolving like situation. It's a constantly evolving code base. And the beautiful part about it is because it's open source, because so many people contribute to it, it is something that is wholly uncontrolled by big corporate entities. If anything, Linux does give you the benefit by having big companies contribute to the kernel as do small hobbyist individuals. There are people of all walks of life committing to something that is a shared experience for all. And look, ultimately the end, you know, if you're somebody that wants to cut the cord from big tech dependence, this is a great first step. If you're somebody that's interested in your privacy and your safety and your security, Linux ain't a bad option to go to, okay? In fact, if anything, it's just a community that is growing. Now I'm not here to say 
This is the year of the Linux desktop. There's a long way to go. But there are a couple other examples that I wanted to showcase if you wanted something even simpler. Now I've talked a lot about something known as Bazite Linux, but to give you an idea of how amazing this project is, I'm gonna show you something known as the Muda Box. Now downstairs in my basement, I got so fed up with Xboxes and Playstations and any of these systems that I felt maybe if I wanted to experience real console simplicity with my PC, why not just build an operating system around it? Now tomorrow, Given the fact that Windows 10 will not support a lot of systems, there's gonna be a lot of hardware that is gonna be up for sale that is sold cheaper because it's technically unsupported by Windows. Now, if you're somebody that really cares about budget gaming, you can now put together a pretty decent console system and installing Bazite Linux under it, provided you have an AMD GPU, uh, NVIDIA does kind of work, but AMD is generally far more preferable. Now, while AMD is preferred, they are doing a lot of work to make sure NVIDIA, and even by extension, Intel is supported very well. Now, if you're on the desktop, NVIDIA works as well as you can expect. But if you're building a home console like I did, like the Muda Box, it's so easy to go to their website and follow these simple commands. For instance, do you have any handheld gaming computer? Yes, you can wipe the Steam Deck's core system and replace it with Bazite, and in some cases, there are some cool advantages to have. But if you're also somebody that just wants to build that home computer, you can go to the home theater PC. You can select your actual GPU vendor, like for instance, if you have an NVIDIA card, select NVIDIA. If you have an AMD card, select the AMD. And if you look at it really closely, you can see that they go all the way as far back as the AMD 400 series. For NVIDIA, the 1600 GTX series. So a lot of old shit is actually very well supported. But they will tell you if you go with NVIDIA, for instance, or Intel, that the gaming mode is not really supported in the complete state because there are some issues with those builds. But if you have AMD, it actually works better. So you can select KDE, which is a desktop environment, and then you can download the Bazite Deck or Bazite Deck Live. Installing it is as simple as really most operating systems. And once everything is done and ready to go, sync up a controller, hit the power button on your PC, and it literally starts up like a fucking real console. It's just the Steam Deck interface blown up to a big computer. It's actually fucking awesome. Now, even for people that are just gaming, and I play a lot of my games downstairs, they're PC games, but they're running with that console front end, and it absolutely works flawlessly out of the box. Now, I have a 6900 XT in the Muda box, and granted, it's not the shiniest, newest graphics card, but a lot of those modern games run pretty fucking well on that device. Now, as far as people who are in the world of emulators, if you're somebody that loves playing old school video games like I do, PlayStation 2, Super Nintendo, PlayStation 3, hell, all the way to the Xbox 360, because fuck me, that's retro these days, Emu Deck is another amazing solution that isn't just locked to the Steam Deck. You can have this thing running on pretty much even Windows and Android, but if you're just somebody on Linux, you can download the actual Emu Deck community installer, and following a few simple commands, you can get things up and running, and it's an amazing front end that just absolutely acts. Like I would say the Netflix almost, like a local version of Netflix for your ROM game. So plug in your ROMs, plug in your BIOS systems, and I swear to God, get ready for some good old fashioned retro gaming. Now obviously anything outside of Steam or even old emulators is supported through things like Lutris, which is where I run some really old PC games as well as third party launchers. Uh, just set them up once, kind of forget them and install your games through them and you'll have a pretty goddamn good time. Now ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Microsoft Windows has kind of ceased in this situation. And Linux, throughout even all of the controversies and whatnot, there are so many options that are available that I've shown you today in this video that now that Windows 10 support is done, for anybody with that hardware, you can take so many different directions. You can go the simple route or you can go all the way to the advanced route. But ultimately, the best part is, is your computer finally just fucking belongs to you. No need to give Microsoft their forced requirement to connect. No need to have a Microsoft account just to use your computer locally, which is fucking absurd. And let's say your hardware is a little bit too old. No need to go burn money right now in a market and an economy that is a little bit too taxing. I think we all can agree. You can save yourself some money and add some years to your system by switching to the fucking Penguin. 
Hell, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got the money, you know, you might want to switch over to the Mac side <laughs> because you can even still install Arch Linux on MacBooks and do some pretty goddamn good gaming that way. But ultimately, I think it's time you take ownership of your shit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.